Hold up. Yo, what's going on guys? It is Foxy Dude 98 here. Welcome back to a brand new video for you guys there here on my channel. Today we are back with F1 2016 Career Mode Season 3. Oh yes, it's the third season of my career mode. And uh, basically, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of a switch up. Now, as you can see on the screens, it says Season 3 Round 1 Australia Qualifying 1. Meaning that I would have done practice for Mercedes-Benz. However, uh, that wasn't the case. For some reason, I already accidentally did practice... Uh, like quite a few days ago, so ignore that. So it doesn't really matter. I was only going to show qualifying and the race anyway. But as you can see on your screens right now, the pole is quite cl clearly there. It is Mercedes and Red Bull tied on 60 bloody votes. So I've decided to do it this way. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. So I know I gave you guys the choices to vote, but the choices are tied. So I've got to now make the decision, where do I go? Now, this is how it's going to work. Now, guys, this is my logic. So, if you guys are a little bit like meh, I'll put it in the comments uh, section as well so you guys can read it in a text version. But, when I drove for McLaren Honda, I won the Formula 1 World Championship. If I didn't win that championship with McLaren Honda, I would have stayed on for another season and gone on to try and improve that McLaren car and become champions with McLaren. However... I did. I did it, I won it, and I beat Lewis Hamilton. I then accepted a contract offer to go to Mercedes-Benz. Now, the reason I went to Mercedes is because they are my favourite team I've, at, the, at the moment, because they, the only reason they're my favourite team is because Lewis Hamilton drives them, because Hamilton is my favourite driver in Formula 1. However, I won the title with Mercedes-Benz, and a lot of the times, I was just doing pure Mercedes dominance. And the thing is, it's because I'm on Legend AI, the difficulty that I'm comfortable with, I know a lot of you guys are like, go to Ultimate, but I'm like, nope, this is the, what I'm comfortable with. A lot of people have been telling me to, you know, change things up a little bit, but there's not a lot I can do. So I've already won the title at McLaren, and I've done the same thing at Mercedes. So the only thing I can really do at Mercedes is max it out to give it to see what the fastest car possibly is. However, I just don't feel that's going to be as fun anymore. Like, I'm still going to just be with Mercedes. I want to have a proper, proper challenge. Like, for McLaren, I was having action after action after action. For Mercedes, I had the craziest race I've ever witnessed in Azerbaijan. But a lot of the times, funnily enough, it was actually quite quiet. Even when I started from the back of the grid, I still managed to make my way up very quickly. And then it was sort of like a strategical battle. So... We're starting a new career. Yep, that's right. I'm taking things into my own hands, and I'm starting a brand new career mode. So, I'm going to be doing things my way. So, uh, how do I do things? So, I do full practice. Yeah, practice. Uh, I want full qualifying, and I want 25% races, because that's how I do things. Custom weekend advance. Um, yep, that's the difficulty I play on. Profile correction. So, now I basically have to recreate my profile. So, you, you guys know how this works. This was the guy I picked beforehand. Now, helmet designer, last time I picked this helmet here, but now I can pick whatever helmet I want. And I want black and gold. So let's see if I can get that. Let's see if I can get black and gold. Um, I don't know if it's really making... Oh, it's just the base. My bad. Detail one. So this is the, this is the gold part. So we want that pure gold. Yes. And this bit... We want it. Oh, that kind of ruins it slightly. What if we had that? Then they did. Yes, and then detail two. So we've got this. Which part is it on about? I don't know what part it's on about, to be honest. Yes, it's on the back of it. Get that in black. There we go. Oh, saturation red. No thanks. I want that like that. Yes. Um, we want the British flag. Yep. And then we want, of course, we have... We, you know the driver number by now, of course. You know you know the number. 98. Name. Oh, I need to put my name back in again. Damn, I've never I've done this in a while. Foxy. Bang. Surname. Yeah, we know it. It's the same as... Everything's the same as it was before. But uh, I never got a contract offer to go anywhere. And I wanted to go to a different team, I felt. So, yeah, abbreviated name. Uh... Foxy. Oh, it, only has, it can only be three characters. Okay, well, Fox it is then. Um, so, I accept. Uh, team selection. I'm I'm going to Red Bull. It, it's done. And I'm picking a teammate of Daniel Ricciardo. 
and we're starting a career mode. We're doing it all fresh. Um, so yeah, guys, if you guys do uh, aren't uh, are not happy uh, with the way that I have decided to do this, I the only it was the only way I could settle it. There was a split decision. I gave the choices. There was two teams that were tied on votes, so I wanted to get this video recorded. So the only way I could do that is by um, is by doing it by making me make the choice at the end of it. So uh, yeah, I'm going with Red Bull, um, and we're going to be taking on Mercedes this season and seeing if we can uh, win the championship and bring the back dominance back to Red Bull. Um, so if you guys do enjoy the video, nevertheless, though, and you still enjoy my content, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel at all yet. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, oh, we, we know all this stuff. She's going to come up to us and she's going to say, like, hi and everything. Um, whoa, Red Bull's team building actually looks really sexy for a change. Hi. You all right, love? Emma Jenkins. You all right, love? Specialist in contract law and I think yeah, I know you are. Your agent. Yeah, I know. Can I just say how poorly graphically designed her hair is? I mean, Codemaster's done a crap job on that. Oh, shut. All right. We're going to get to practice and then qualifying and then the race. And we're going to skip this woman because she's annoying me. All right, then, guys. As you can see, we are here for the practice session here in Australia. Starting things off with the track acclimatization test. You can see that we actually only managed to get one green. The rest of the lap was purple. Uh, so we did that in fine style in our brand new Red Bull car. And then for the tire wear test... I actually didn't do very good on it. I got a purple and then two greens and I was slower than the lap time required. And then I went right around the final corner here, clipping my front wing. And uh, that was that. Unfortunately, I was only able to get a pass on the track acclimatization test, which I was disappointed about. But nevertheless, got to move on and got to keep on going. And then for the qualifying simulation run, you can see that we are on the super soft tyres in a different practice session. Because, of course, it's sunset now. And uh, we are going to come across the line here and we're going to go fastest for the uh, session, but I do believe we got outpaced in practice. I can't really remember. But as you can see, our resource points are coming in, and we did get an initial 500 resource points um, as a little um, bonus for us being uh, a, a new team. Because, of course, I started a fresh career mode. And uh, you can see we have got a f our first rival, a fact as well, for Red Bull Racing. And it is going to be... Oh, yeah, we know it's an introduction. It's going to be Daniel Ricciardo. So my teammate for this uh, se session, we're going to be having him as my rival making it even Hi. excuse me You're even more intense between me and my teammate Ricardo moving on then into the session goals here she wants us to they want me to qualify third or higher and then they want me to beat Daniel Ricardo so very big asks from Red Bull themselves so uh, we definitely need to try and see if we can live up to those standards coming around the final corner here and putting on the DRS as we make a blast towards that start finish line you can see that we managed to uh, go half second slower than Lewis Hamilton uh, in the uh, in Q1 and that eventually gave us P3 in Q1 with the likes of Ricardo, Rosberg and Raikkonen all going for the soft tyres around uh, here on Q in Q1. I stayed with the super soft tyres. Into Q2 we go then. We are on the super soft tyres once again here. And uh, coming across the line now, we actually do set the fastest laps of the uh, session. But that will quickly be beaten by quite a few people. My teammate Ricardo going fastest ahead of Rosberg, Hamilton and Raikkonen and then myself. Uh, in Q2, so good showing from Ricardo. Definitely has a lot of pace. And into Q3 we go. I needed to find a hell of a lot of time, and on this lap I gave it absolutely everything I could. There was nothing more I could get out of this car by myself to really go for it. And there you go, over the line to get the fastest lap of the session so far. But there was still more cars to come around, and eventually. We managed to only get 5th place with my teammate Ricardo getting pole ahead of Rosberg, Raikkonen, Hamilton, myself, Vettel, Bottas, Alonso, Massa and Perez. So uh, a bit of a disappointing showing from myself, but there was nothing more I could get out of that car. Everything I put into that quality lap was everything I could have possibly got into it. Um, so yeah, unfortunately the driver position, we actually go down into the red, um, but hopefully uh, we will be able to get some better races coming up and uh, we can move ourselves back up into the green and even into the purple. Into the race goals then, we're going to be asked, I can't remember what the race goals were, there they are on your screens right there. But that's it for practice and for qualifying, let's get into the race for the Australian Grand Prix. They say that even a second is an eternity in Formula One. So going four winter months with no racing at all has seemed a very long time indeed. We're back though in Melbourne, home of the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 16 corners 
and 3.3 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles an hour. The close proximity of the barriers makes accidents inevitable and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. I'm joined today in the commentary box as I will be throughout this season by a great racing driver, a former F1 competitor, man who was world champion once upon a time as well and an all-round top chap. It's the one and only Anthony Davidson. And tell me, here we are, first Grand Prix of the season, the first time racing these cars. So what are the big questions that need to be answered here, in your view? First of all, Crofty, and thanks for the glowing introduction. I just want to say it's a real privilege to be here, and I can't wait to see what this competitive field has in store for us this season. Now, to answer your question, obviously there's the question of performance in race trim, but really this is going to be all about reliability. It's the first Grand Prix of the season, don't forget. You're pushing all your new components to their limits. Formula One cars are full of very sophisticated but also very sensitive technology. So the most important thing today is to get to the end of the race, keep everything in good condition and try to stay out of trouble while you're at it. OK, the run into turn one isn't too long, so the pack will be bunched up. Take care. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. It was a good showing from Red Bull in qualifying, and Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position, with Nico Rosberg alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Hamilton, a Red Bull, and Vettel, Bottas, Alonso, Massa, and Sergio Perez, Button, Holkenberg, Carlos Sainz, and Grosjean, Kvyat, Gutierrez, Kevin Magnussen, and Jolien Palmer. Verlein and Harry Anto, Felipe Nasser and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. All right then guys, as you can see, we are on the grids here for the Australian Grand Prix. And we're going to be starting on the super soft tyres, so the red mark super soft tyres that we qualified on. And then we're going to be making a pit stop to the yellow mark soft tyres for the end of the race. And uh, here starting in fifth place, feeling quite conf confident really uh, for this Grand Prix. Uh, I definitely wasn't quick in a straight line, but I've just, I've, ever since I've started using this Red Bull car, the chassis is absolutely phenomenal. So hopefully we could try and work something here from fifth on the grids here. As you can see, we're now on the grids. We've got three Four, now five red lights here in Australia and it is lights out and away we go and season three is underway and it's a bit of a slow and steady start for myself here and now as we look to try and move over to the inside line down into turn one we get straight past Lewis Hamilton just missing Kimi Raikkonen's rear wing there and no contact between myself and Kimi Raikkonen but we've actually got a double slipstream here so we're going to use that to our advantage go to the right hand side of the circuit on Raikkonen and on Rosberg the pair of them break earlier so then I put on the throttle a little bit more round the inside of Raikkonen and also Nico Rosberg and uh, Ricardo maintains the lead. It's a Red Bull 1-2 here in Australia. And we're going to be looking to try and increase our advantage out front. You can see a gap already forming between myself and Nico Rosberg. And now we look to try and close down Daniel Ricardo in the other Red Bull. My teammates hopefully trying to get past him and uh, look to try and make inroads on his leads here. So coming now through into the middle sector here, we're actually in rich, rich fuel mixture. So we're using maximum revs here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I already noticed that the gap is not quite that, it's not big to Ricardo. So I felt if I can stick this thing in rich revs uh, for as long as I could, maybe I could have a run at Ricardo. And you can already see me closing in on Ricardo. So we may have an opportunity to take the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. But let's not think too far ahead here. As you're coming through the final sector, you can see how much I'm closing on Ricardo at the moment with my faster engine mixture right now. And I'm definitely going to keep it on here as we come around the final corner now, uh, entering what is going to be the end of the first lap. And quite frankly, a perfect lap for Red Bull standards here. We are P1, oh sorry, we're P2, and Ricardo is in P1. He goes and sets the fastest lap, but you can see that we're actually in the slipstream of Daniel Ricardo. Can we make a move down into one? We just, we were thinking about it, just too far back to make a move, but we get a great exit out of the corner. Now we're in a position to really attack uh, Ricardo here. As you can see, we get into the slipstream of my teammate here, make a move down the inside into turn three we go, and we get past Daniel Ricardo, and we have taken the lead of the Australian Grand Prix, and we have snatched it away from the homegrown favorite Ricardo and uh, let's get a replay of everything that happened at the start so it was a bit of a slow start like I said for myself yeah Valtteri Bottas definitely getting a good start uh, and also Sebastian Vettel I checked the guard down on the inside and I managed to make the move on Lewis Hamilton stick nice and perfectly without causing any contact between me and him and then Hamilton actually drops a little bit back down the field 
We then see that Rosberg and Raikkonen are going for a little bit of a scrap between each other. So I get a double slipstream there, which is going to give me so much speed. And uh, I managed to get past both Nico and uh, Kimi at the same time, which is perfect. And now my pursuit of Daniel Ricciardo is uh, its about to go. So as you can see, we are making the charge now through the end of the first sector. You can see Ricciardo was about a second, 1.1 seconds clear of us when we got through the end of the first sector. Now our attack on Ricciardo is going to keep on going. We're going to keep pushing and uh, hope that we can uh, just uh, try and keep in roads with Ricciardo, which of course you saw from the live action we actually managed to do in perfect style. So... Coming around now, what is going to be towards the turn 12 chicane here? Uh, Rosberg, Raikkonen, and the rest behind were definitely scrapping a lot more uh, than what I was. I managed to clear everybody before they all started fighting. So, me and Ricardo already have a little bit of an advantage, and we're going to need that because I reckon that those Mercedes drivers and even the Ferraris will definitely come back at us at some point. So, we need to keep on going. But as you can see, coming around the second to last corner here, not the second to last corner. This now is the second to last corner coming up now. Here we go, this left-hander. Uh, we're still very close to Daniel Ricciardo. And uh, this is when I I was going to put the car down into standard fuel mixture and just get myself across the line. Um, but uh, as you can see here, nothing really went of it. And uh, I just kept on going, kept on using the speed of my car down the inside into turn one. We weren't close enough yet, making the flip through turn two. And uh, now we were in the slipstream of Ricardo. I took a lot more exit curb there. Didn't really need to, actually. It kind of lost me a little bit of speed. And then we make that late breaking move down the inside into turn three there. And we got past Ricardo and we're up into the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. Moving on to lap three of the Grand Prix, beginning to start lap four. And you can see that my advantage over Daniel Ricardo is very small. My engineer asked for a strategy change. I didn't want to change my strategy. And uh, the homegrown favourite, Ricardo, doesn't seem to be too pleased that his new teammate has come and overtaken him for the lead. So Ricardo goes into my slipstream. He moves over to the outside line for turn one. And uh, he's going to give him the inside into turn two. But he doesn't take it. And we manage to defend Daniel Ricardo there. But I'm sure there's going to be a couple more onslaughts of Ricardo coming for me here in this race. And I have no doubts about it. And uh, now as you can see, onto the lap four again. This time going through a different part uh, of the circuit here. Uh, you can see that we are still trying to increase our advantage, but Ricardo's actually going for a move here. He's going to go to the outside line here, into turn 12. A bold move from Ricardo, but it's not going to pay off for him. I smack the Ballard over here, and I defend from Ricardo. Nice and comfy there, but a very strange move from Ricardo. You never see people doing that, um, but uh, Ricardo's a bold and brave man, and he's trying to prove a point uh, and try and say, look, I'm the number one driver around here. I'm the homegrown favorite. This is my track. Let me show you how it's done, and I was not having any of it. But anyway, on to lap 5 of the Grand Prix, and we're actually going to be coming in for our first pit stop of this race. As you can see, let's see what the Red Bull boys can do. Can they give me a quick pit stop? Oh yes, they can. Two seconds, that pit stop was dead on. A brilliant pit stop from the Red Bull mechanics, and we are out in the lead of, well not in the lead of the Grand Prix, because there's about a million cars that come flying through. You can see them all there, but you kind of know what I mean. So, um, as you can see, Breaking down into turns one and two. We managed to stay in front of just the Sauber, but we still got a lot more drivers to be thinking about and overtaking. And yes, we're definitely going to need to be making some overtakes and hopefully we don't get held up by them. Moving on to lap six of the Grand Prix now. And this is just at the end of the lap that we were just on. And uh, we're going to be trying to make some inroads on uh, Jolian Palmer in the Renault. But yeah, there you can see, look, there's Ricardo coming out of the pits. There he is. We're going to have to go through the middle, breaking through. Oh, my God. So close between me, Palmer, and Ricardo. And Ricardo's been hit by Palmer. But Ricardo does recover just about. But that was so tight between all three of us there. There was not enough space for all of us. And somehow, somehow, we managed to get ourselves through. And uh, no contact, no damage uh, for myself anyway. Problems, though, for Daniel Ricardo. Anyway, now, as you can see, we have still got some problems. Daniel Ricciardo eventually closed back in on us, and now he's going to be looking to try and get the power down. As you can see, he's in the DRS zone, and he's going to be going into the slipstream of the car, but he doesn't quite get the move here down into turn one, into turn two, and however, he gets a nice exit here, and Ricciardo is definitely looking feisty, with also Vettel and Rosberg further behind him. Don't forget, guys, I never actually said it, but Sebastian Vettel started this race on the soft tyres, so Vettel is actually on super soft tyres, and we are on soft tyres, so Vettel, as you can see on the leaderboards there, is the man to watch. He is on the faster compound of tyres, and he's definitely definitely a big threat. Moving on to lap 12 of the Grand Prix now and more chaos and more action coming your way. We're now going to be having to attack. We're being attacked from Vettel and from Ricardo here. All angles going into turn 12 chicane. Who's going to come out on top? We just come out on top here of Vettel, Ricardo and Rosberg. Such chaotic there. I, I didn't expect anyone to go that wide uh, towards turn 12 but these AIs, they're gutsy. 
Moving on to lap 13 of the Grand Prix in the same place. Vettel has got past Ricardo, and now he fancies a run for the lead of this Grand Prix on myself. I'm going to cover the inside line into turn 12, and I get that inside line covered there, and I shut the door on Vettel straight away, giving him no chances to overtake me. And uh, he actually dropped a little bit further back at this point, and uh, he uh, lost a lot of time. And luckily, we can use that time that we have to try and set, go further forward. Luckily for myself, the other drivers behind started battling between each other for the chances to get second, third and fourth in the Grand Prix. So that means for our first race for Red Bull, we started fifth. And as you can see, as we've been across the line, we're going to take the win here in Australia. A hard fought win for myself, if I'm honest. But that is a perfect debut for a new team here at Red Bull Racing. We are going to be bringing all of the glory back for this team. Of course, they had the dominance with Sebastian Vettel in 2010, 11, 12 and 13. And uh, Mercedes have been dominating and now it is our turn to show us what we're made of here. There you go. Nice new win there. I've actually got a new helmet as well. I said that at the start of the video. But overall then in this Grand Prix, we were definitely not the fastest. I'm going to say that right now. Defensive wise, we were brilliant. And that is exactly why we won the race. We won that race probably from the start and that first lap. And we overtook everybody and then controlled the race the way I wanted it. But as you can see, Red Bull claim a 1-2. Just like they did actually in Season 2 when I was driving for Mercedes. Uh, I actually claimed third in that race. And the Red Bulls got 1-2. So uh, a little bit of a replica of last season. But uh, there was a lot more action definitely. But myself then of course takes the win here. Champagne flowing. Daniel Ricciardo comes home and he takes second. Nico Rosberg there on the podium. Mercedes in third. And of course, of course um, with me leaving... God, I got hiccups. With me leaving uh, the team, Rosberg comes back in and there's no more Max Verstappen. So no more driver of the day for him. Moving on into the full classification then, you can see that we got the 1-2 there. Nico Rosberg current claiming uh, third place with Vettel dropping down to fourth. I believe when I defended the move against Vettel, he actually, I think, went into the back of me slightly. and actually had a bit of front wing damage. I heard the engineer say there's a bit of damage to the front wing. In the driver's standings, of course, we take the lead in the driver's standings. Thanks to, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's all going to be the same in the driver's standings. It's going to be where everyone finished for this Grand Prix, with Lewis Hamilton actually finishing only down in fifth place. Not a good result for Hamilton, indeed. In the constructor standings, a perfect start for Red Bull there, with maximum 43 points uh, out of a possible 43 points we could have asked for. But guys, that is going to be it for episode one of my F1 2016 career mode, season three with Red Bull. And we are going to be making not one, but two upgrades heading into the Bahrain Grand Prix. Now, the weaknesses I found on the car with straight line speed and also the fuel efficiency. I wasn't able to really run in rich for that long. I had to really carefully use my fuel and I was losing so much on the lap. I, I started the race with 1.3 plus fuel and after the end of the first lap, I had 0.7 left. I used like nearly half my fuel in rich revs for a full lap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make changes to the engine power and also the fuel efficiency and they'll be ready on the car for Bahrain. But guys, hope you have enjoyed this video. Drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here as well and I'll see you guys for the next race in Bahrain. Take care, peace.